So real estate values are up, which means that potential gains are up, which means we need to be thinking smart about taxes. Today we're going to talk about the 1031 tax deferred exchange, so let's get after it. Okay, so today we're talking about the 1031 tax deferred exchange, which is this methodology in the IRS code, Chris, that allows people to basically take an investment property that they've made money on, they've got a gain on, and they're trying to figure out, well, do I sell that property, pay the hefty gains tax, or is there something else that they could be doing to stay in the game and maybe leapfrog their way into a, maybe a better property, a property that better suits them. So we're gonna talk about that today because what we're seeing now, and by the way, we say now, the 1031 tax deferred exchange, it seemed like it was on, oh my goodness, every fourth contract from 2000 to 2008 because property values were popping, appreciation was happening every year, people were making money and they're like, how do I roll this into something else, something else? Right. And then all of a sudden 2008 hit, and we know that the market really shrank during that time, so people weren't really focused on or achieving gains. And then over the last couple of years, well, we know what's happened with real estate values, right? right? Everything's come up. So now we're in this mode where in 2023, really just over the last, let's just say the last three months or so, last couple of months of last year, and now we're starting to see the 1031 tax deferred exchange pop into real estate transactions. So what we wanted to do is just kind of talk about what are the parameters of that of that modality? What, what do you need to be thinking about? How do people execute it? And then maybe talk about some different options too, right? Sure, well, I mean, you, you, want, you want a tax advisor, first of all. Right? Sure. So we're not a tax advisor. Let me just put that out there right now. You do want to have somebody that you can talk about. Every case might be a little bit different. And, and there's some specific and, and really strict rules on what you have to, a guy, uh, follow. Sure. Yeah, of um, for example, you have you have to identify a replacement property. Right. And you just can't say, well, I, I'm going to buy a condo in Sea Pines. You have to actually give an address. So you have to identify that replacement property and you have to do that inside of 45 days. Of when you close on the on what's called the relinquished properties, the property you're selling, and right. then the replacement property is what you're seeking to buy thereafter. Right. So once you sell, within 45 days, you have to identify that property. And right. then you've got 180 days to finalize the deal. And those are contiguous days. That's not 45 days plus 180. That's right. That's Those both have the first day, the second day. They share that all the way through. And if, if you miss those dates, then it's over. Right. I mean, it's not like you call the IRS and say, well, I'm, I'm off by a week. Can I get an extension? The answer is going to be no. The other guideline is it's like kind. They call this a like kind exchange, yes. which is basically means, unfortunately, you can't take, let's say locally you've had a short-term rental property and you're like, you know what? We just need more room. And frankly, we want to move to the island. Let's sell that investment property and roll it into the purchase of a primary residence. That doesn't work. Right. But a like property doesn't have to be a villa for a villa. Right. A like property is an investment property. So let's just say, for example, you have, you have some investment land and you want to roll that into an investment villa. Right. You can do that. They don't seem like they're the same, but they're the same in the, in the minds of this 1031. Right, that's the like-kind component. Yes. It's held for investment purposes. So you could have a commercial property, a commercial building yes. uh -huh. that you sell, and let's say you sold that, and you, that was a nice size property, and price point, you could actually go into multiple other properties that you purchase and create a 1031 tax deferred exchange on that. Correct, right? and and then the other, other scenario could be that you sell a, a, a property and the like property maybe is not as expensive, well then you can just re, you can just report the gain on the difference. Yeah, they've got a funny word for that. Uh, it's called boot. So if any any cash you touch in the sale mm -hmm. becomes boot. And so the thing about touching, which is kind of cool about this, is that when you sell the relinquished property, the property you're selling, all that money that you're not going that you're basically going to roll into something else has to go with a qualified intermediary. It's a third party to the transaction so that the federal government understands that you never touch the money. And that can't be your insurance. It can't be your real estate agent, and it really can't even be your attorney. Correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's another player that's totally that's right. involved in it. Now, then it gets kind of tricky, too, because sometimes folks get really excited about buying an investment property, thinking that they better hurry up and buy it. 
And we had this with a client recently that was mm -hmm. right in this situation. They rushed to buy a property and then said, well, now I want to go ahead and sell the relinquished property. Well, we either, we either had to hurry up and get that done mm -hmm. to make sure that we sold, marketed and sold the relinquished property before he purchased the replacement property, or you can do a reverse exchange, right? So basically yes. in a situation like that is you can, you can buy the replacement property, but you've got to get maybe a fourth player in there, which is another party that holds title until you could sell the relinquished property. It gets kind of complicated, right? right. <laughs> but then there's other scenarios too. Let's say you didn't yeah. want to go, let's say you, you were tired of being in the, in the investment mm -hmm. property game, mm -hmm. but you knew you wanted to affect, and you wanted to realize that game because all of a sudden the values have gone up. So, but you don't want to earn it. You want to reinvest it, but not in real estate. Isn't there another option on that too? Well, there's something that's is pretty interesting. It's something is called a DST, a Delaware Statutory Trust. It doesn't have to happen in Delaware. It's it's just the name of it. But basically, it's it's a way. It's a kind of a passive investment instead of an active investment. So let's say you've you've sold a you've sold a property and you can't find that replacement, and you've got all of this gain and you've got to put it somewhere or you're going to get uh, taxed on it you can roll it into a DST. And uh, when you roll it into a DST, then it's, 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 that gain is deferred. Right. And it turns into, um, it turns into a, just a place to hold that. Right. And there's a period of time and everything like that that you have to put it in there. Another kind of investment, yes. but it gets you out of the immediate property management investment Absolutely. kind of mode. Absolutely, so if someone sold a big, uh, big oceanfront house, millions and millions of dollars, and they were gonna have a huge gain on it, this could be a major saver if they're not able to replace it in time. And you can do it quicker than maybe a standard real estate transaction. Yeah, how cool is that? So more information could be provided on that, right? Sure. What we typically see and what we're seeing increasingly is, honestly, folks are selling properties out of, out of our area and doing a 1031 tax deferred exchange into this area because either they can finally afford to be in our area or they're excited about getting something that can be used as a rental property in this area and get their feet wet in this market which is kind of what the other thing we've seen is through the years, progressively, you know, a lot of folks, and maybe if you're listening, you've been through this pattern or you're on this pattern is you, you visit the Hilton Head Island area, you vacation, you fall in love with it, you buy a, an investment property, a, a rental, short-term rental, maybe a couple bedrooms. And then, then you're like, oh man, we need a little bit more room, right? So then all of a sudden you made some money on that. Then you do a 1031 tax deferred exchange, maybe into a, a home. Right, mm -hmm. and then folks in, on, enjoy that. Maybe that's a short-term rental property. Maybe that's a long-term rental property. Mm -hmm. And then eventually someone says, you know, boy, I, I just wish we had just a bona fide second home. And so all of a sudden, over time, there's this evolution and allowing the 1031 tax of our exchange to play and part of that can be hugely advantageous in terms of, of making use of that realized gain over, over time. That's right. Your 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 purchase power goes up because you have more money to work with. Right, right. <laughs> and to be clear, this is not we're not avoiding taxation. You're deferring, deferring taxation, mm -hmm. which gives you the buying power just to continue to build and build and build. So we're really excited about it because we're starting to see it happen more and more in the market. And, and we really are realizing that folks are excited about where values have gone. And, and I think there's a lot of people out there thinking, boy, I would sell, but I don't want to pay that gains right. tax because, boy, that's going to be a big, a big tax bill. Right. Here's a way for people to be thinking about ways to do it. You can, you can reinvest all of it. You can reinvest some of it. You can break it apart and go into different kinds of properties. Yeah. You don't have to do it in the same location. So there's a lot of flexibility realized from that. Yeah, we're seeing, we're seeing a lot more people do that right now. It's, it's a big topic. It's really advantageous uh, for investors and uh, in real estate and... Um, Gosh, we, if, you want to, if you want to know more about it, we'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah, absolutely. We've got plenty of information on it. We've got mm -hmm. local attorneys that are experts in it. We've got a local qualified intermediary yep. that we know That's right. that can be involved in it. And so we just encourage folks to take a look at it because it might, it might give you the avenue to the next step in your real estate enjoyment and purchase and investment. So as always, by the way, keep us in mind. Follow us on the YouTube channel. We're always glad to bring you information about what's happening in the local low country marketplace. And we appreciate your time. Just hit a thousand subscribers. <laughs>